Whoa. Of, uh, on this Wednesday afternoon, it's regarding COVID. I'm going to uh, move away from the agenda first thing. We're going to start this meeting with a prayer by Commissioner Satcher, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you'd stand, please. Uh, Lord, we thank you so much uh, for helping us each step of the way. Lord, we pray that today you would be here in this meeting, that you'd lead us and guide us, uh, show us the answers to the questions that may be bigger than us. We thank you for uh, Christmas season that we just finished up and uh, for the wonderful gift that is your son. Bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone, and, and thank you for joining us uh, today for this special meeting. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of um, decisions being made rapidly on the COVID vaccine and so forth, and uh, I can tell you that a couple of commissioners earlier in the week have wanted to uh, have a special meeting, and we thought we could wait until Tuesday, but we thought it best to go ahead and move it for this afternoon. So that being said, um, Sherry Corrier, where are you? Hi. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Hi, good afternoon, commissioners, members of the board, and the rest of the folks here. Sherry Corrier, the county administrator. I'm just going to quickly open up, um, and I'd like to go through some of the points that we really want everyone to garner from today's meeting. They'll be reiterated by two other speakers. Director Jake Sauer from our Public Safety Department will provide the details of our current COVID status and the uh, vaccine information. And then Paul Alexander, our Information uh, Technology Director, will go over a new process that we'd like to roll out. I also want to make sure and recognize Dr. Jennifer Bensey, who's here, to also answer any specific questions, our public health official. So um, today we're here to get out the current information of the details of our COVID efforts. So as Director Sauer will come forward, he will provide you with a brief update. At next Tuesday's meeting, January 12th, we will do our regular update again and provide you with more up-to-date information from that day. I've passed out to each one of you a copy of the Governor's Executive Order 20-315. The, those I have some extra copies for the public if they'd like them, but that particular item covers the COVID-19 vaccine administration protecting Florida seniors program. And this is where the specific guidelines have come to the county and other counties through the Florida Department of an Emergency Management. Director Sauer will cover those later. Also, I passed out to each one of you a copy of Executive Order 2316, which is a new executive order extending the local state of emergency on behalf of the state of Florida through March 3rd, so for another 60 days. Um, that This being an emergency meeting, you heard uh, Chairman Bob mention we had some commissioners approach us early on last week when we first received vaccines about a special meeting. Commissioner Satcher first reached out to talk about what that process was, and then over the course of the next week, various others did as well. When we received some additional vaccines, as uh, Chairman Baum mentioned, she determined that this meeting was appropriate. Um, today, we're going to, um, the purpose of our process today is to go through with you a modified registration process of what we would like to now call the vaccine standby pool. This also has been put together with ideas from various commissioners and our staff, and it will allow for a seamless transition to allow seniors 65 and over to register in a standby pool for future vaccines. This work getting here today involves work on behalf of our information technology department. And we've had a lot of comments about the ability of our website and our county servers to be able to maintain and hold the number of reaches and, out and calls that we've received. And we want to explain that. We want to explain what we're capable of doing and what we plan to do going forward. The big message today and the takeaway is that once this new process is approved by our board, then we will be able to open this vaccine standby pool 
when we are able to get all of it up and running, we're anticipating that to be Thursday, tomorrow, at beginning at 10 p.m., but there will be two methods of registration for the pool. Now, we're going to go over this in more detail, but I want to say it now so that everybody gets ready to hear the actual integral details. One will be an online registration form that people will be able to access through our website, and the second area will be for those that do not have access to um, electronics or cannot log on, they will be able to then contact and call our 311 call center. Here's the most important part of this whole process and that there is no deadline to register. So nobody has to sit at their phone or sit by their phone or sit by their computer and keep pressing refresh. It's going to be an open-ended registration process to be placed in this pool. Another thing I want to mention that's been brought to my attention is that we'd like to make sure that all of our residents understand that there are some scams going on out there. The county is not asking or never will ask you in any of our work with this program for any credit card information. We won't ask you for your social security number, your bank accounts, or any personally financially related program process or program so keep in mind these are free vaccinations that have been sent to us through the process with the Department of Health the state of Florida and the federal government also um, we'll be asking individuals as they place themselves in this pool that if over time when the vaccination process expands to other potential providers such as Publix, CVS, Walgreens, MCR services, or any of our hospitals, that if a person receives a vaccine, that they remove, call and remove themselves from the pool so that it allows others to participate. Um, also, you're going to hear about this random process. It's going to be a random then registration, more like a lottery, once we receive vaccines. And so I just wanted to preface the next two presentations with those main items so you can be prepared to hear those. We're here for um, questions afterwards, and we also have an extensive press release that we'll be ready to put out if the board decides to approve this process. So with that, I'd like to introduce Director Jake Sauer of our Public Safety Department. And commissioners, I'd like to add at this point that what I'd like to do, if you have any questions when a speaker finishes, like when Jake finishes, you have any questions for Jake, let's ask him at that point and move forward. Thank you. Welcome, Jake. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Jake Sauer, Director of Public Safety for Manatee County. I'm going to do a quick COVID-19 update and where we are in our positivity rate, and then I'll move into some to discussion about uh, our vaccination process. <clears throat> so as, as always, as I, uh, as I start these out, uh, this information, all the data that I'm going to present to you today, with the exception of one, and I'll let you know when that is, as uh, from the Florida Department of Health Manatee, I'm sorry, Florida Department of Health dashboard and their latest data push was from last night. So uh, we have currently 22,937 positive cases uh, residents uh, with 437 fatalities, and that's an increase of 4,481 cases and 39 deaths since I last updated you December 15th of 2020. We're currently seeing a 9.2% positivity rate for tests in the last seven days. Last time I updated you, we were at 7.2% on December 15th. We have seen as high or as higher than 10% in the recent days uh, of our seven day and our both 14 day averages. And I would let you know that uh, our positivity rate is dipping down just a little bit, the data I'm showing you today. And that's because the state of Florida's testing sites were not operational during the New, New Year's holiday. We have 97 new COVID-19 hospitalizations since December 15th. And as of the ACA data and EMS public safety's data this morning, over 100 COVID-19 patients in local hospitals uh, as, of, as of today's report. Manatee County EMS reports an increasing delays at local hospitals recently with an uptick in COVID-19 positive patients noted as well. And as always, our County Emergency Operations Center remains at a level two activation during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a graph here that will give you a, a better picture of where we are. And you can see from the beginning of our COVID-19 pandemic 
which first started here in Manatee County with our first resident. You can see two distinct uh, spikes in our COVID-19 cases. And this goes back from March 1st. In the summer, around July, we received our first spike in COVID-19 positive patients. And you can see now we're almost reaching or we have reached our spike uh, to equal that of, the, of our summer spike of COVID-19 positive patients. Residents confirming positive within the, uh, Manatee County. This is our seven day average percent positivity and this is going from seven, uh, September 1st to today. And you can see an ongoing trend with the uh, orange line that uh, smooths out outliers. We continue to see an uptick in positive cases uh, with our seven day average percent positivity. This slide here is new. I, I, th I think this um, could get confusing, but I want to explain it a little bit. That top line that you see there, which is in teal, re represents uh, cases from September 1st to today of COVID-19 positive patients within our hospital system. And the orange line is COVID-19 patients within our ICU system. So you can see an uptick in patients in the hospital system, not in ICU. Next slide. Okay, some vaccination successes and where we are with our vaccination program. Our first responder vaccination, uh, we turned on a drive through vaccine site for frontline healthcare and first responders in less than 24 hours from receiving a vaccine. And that occurred on December 22nd, 2020. And we vaccinated over 60% of said employees, all who wish to receive the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine when we received it. Our drive through vaccination site First, uh, we were the first county in the region to execute a drive-up vaccination operation and uh, implemented vaccination plans for 65 and above in approximately 24 hours from receiving our first doses from the Florida Department of Emergency Management. To this date, I don't know of uh, any other county operation that has started a drive-through uh, vaccination program, and the ones that are have looked at our uh, vaccination site <clears throat> as a model for them. We did pilot a scheduling system that has been replicated across Florida known as Eventbrite, and we're here to talk about that today. And the site has been uh, visited by the City of St. Petersburg, uh, Fire and Emergency Management, Pinellas County Emergency Management, and other jurisdictions for planning purposes. And this gives you a good idea of what, we're, uh, what we've been vaccinating uh, to date. So on December 22nd, as I said, that's when we received our first doses for our frontline healthcare workers and first responders, and that was a gift to us from Pinellas County. 115 on the first day and on December 23rd, 77. And that gave us a, a total of 192. On December 29th, we received uh, our first batch of doses from the Florida Department of Emergency Management. And uh, we stood up, as I said, uh, our drive-through vaccination site through months of planning that we had been uh, anticipating these from. Uh, and, and as you can see, going from the days starting on December 30th, so to Jan January 4th, we increased to modif we've increased uh, modifying how we operate that system so that we can keep expanding. Next slide. So some of the governor's office actions, uh, he's expanding access to vaccines with additional state sponsored sites. He has announced that over uh, this weekend, he will announce six drive through testing sites. He's going to convert those into drive through vaccination sites. Uh, deploy the vaccine into underserved communities, and he's doing that by partnering with Publix. Publix will begin vaccinating those rural communities, rural counties in the state as uh, early as this weekend. <clears throat> Reinforce vaccination efforts with additional staff. The governor's office has hired a thousand nurses that is available to us through the Florida Department of Emergency Management to assist us in local hospitals with vaccination programs and continue to prioritize long-term care facility residents with CVS and Walgreens that he's partnered with. And over eight that I can count today from the report I've ran from the Florida Department of Health, eight of our long-term care facilities have already been serviced by CVS today. As you all, been, as you all know, you've been passed out the executive order 20-315. All providers administering COVID-19 vaccines are, uh, shall only vaccinate the following populations long-term care facility residents and staff. That's currently being handled by CVS and Walgreens. Persons 65 years of age and older. Healthcare personnel with direct patient contact. And there is no resident residency restrictions are to be implemented 
and that's per the Florida Department of Emergency Management. Okay, so some vaccination challenges we have had. Our Eventbrite scheduling system, as we all know, and that's why we're here today, is to talk about that has been a large challenge for our vaccination program and also our county website. Our IT director will talk about that in just a little bit. The key takeaway here in our vaccine uh, availability and some of the challenges we've experienced is we do not have vaccinations. So talking to the director of Florida Department of Emergency Management, uh, I've been in contact with him. I've been in contact with the state as well. Uh, we have requested additional or larger dose of vaccines and they have none to give us. So one thing I'm very proud of is this county's ability to work together uh, through EMS, the Florida Department of Health of Manatee, and all of the departments that came together to, to exercise our uh, vaccine uh, drive-through plan. So we know from the last two weeks we've been doing this, we've gotten very well at it. Uh, we believe once we get a, supp a stable supply chain for our vaccinations, we can ramp those up to 2,000 a day. Um, so I'm very comfortable in that, um, but I, the key takeaway here is the vaccine is just not available at this time. And uh, uh, some of our, our challenges, again, as I was saying, uh, until supply chain stabilize, it's difficult to onboard additional partners in the vaccination process, but we are making plans and contacting those partners, uh, such as local hospital systems, MCR Health, and other partners to help us start vaccinating other locations as well as our drive throughs So I'm gonna talk real quick about this and then our IT director will, will, will come up and explain some of the, the changes. Creating a website that allows persons 65 and over to register at any time. We, we've uh, stood up additional 3-1 support positions and they will be available to assist individuals with registration as needed. Over 30 positions of 3-1 operators will be available once we roll this uh, this website, this new website out. And then once registered in the vaccine standby pool, 311 will con contact the individuals to fill open vaccination appointments via randomized selection. And this will allow for equitable distribution of the vaccine for all of those interested. So moving forward, like I said, our, our, our immediate goal, administer at least 2,000 doses a day through the two county run sites with the ability to expand as needed requested an additional 6,000 doses from the state, and currently they're unable to fill that. We are planning to accommodate for transportation dependent populations and are working with our healthcare partners to target specific vulnerable populations in our communities. And additionally, second dose site planning is already underway. That will be done at the Public Safety Center, and we're looking forward to our first second dose site administration, January 13th. And this gives you a look at uh, Tom Bennett Park, where our, our, drive, our first drive-through site is currently located. Um, some of you have been out there, but I wanted to, to show you the, the, the planning in, in that site. So if you look down at the bottom left, that's where you're going to enter into the, the, the site, over where it says appointment verification. Our code enforcement officers are there to make sure that you have, you do indeed have an appointment to be there. And then once you get past there, move over to our check-in and registration, and then you move a little bit further uh, forward, you'll be vaccinated, move over to our 15 to 30 minute waiting area, which is required for the vaccine dose to make sure you don't have an anaphylactic reaction. And then from there, you're, you're back out and on your way. This is an aerial photo of the Tom Bennett Park area. And it's, I know it's hard to see, but this is looking north of the, of the actual vaccination site itself. On the left side of the screen, you can see one of the uh, mass vaccination tents we purchased under CARES to assist all of those with the Department of Health and EMS in giving the vaccination. And, and these cars lined up on the right are those waiting 15 to 30 minutes after they've, they've received their doses. Oh, it's a video, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is no sound, though. <laughs> So these cars that are leaving, they've already been in the 15 to 30 minute waiting period and, and, and code enforcement is at the back end making sure they've not had any troubles. If they do, our EMS paramedics are on, on standby. This is a st uh, static photo. On the right, you can see two tents set up with uh, four paramedics from our Manta County EMS division. Uh, they are actually giving the vaccination doses there. All of the vaccination supplies are in that white tent right next to the two blue tents. 
and then all of our, our, our vehicles that are, are there, Department of Health and their health bus there. This is what our public safety center vaccination site looks like. This is a picture taken from our first uh, two days of vaccinations at the public safety center with first responders and frontline healthcare workers. Um, this site we actually, at this time, was a walk-up site as, the, as the, the first responders and healthcare workers drove in. They parked, walked over to that tent, got their vaccination, and then waited off to the right there that you see all those people staying in for their 15 to 30 minute uh, monitoring period. So to recap some things, adjustment to the current appointment process, moving to a vaccine standby pool for those 65 and over wanting the vaccine within Manatee County, move traffic from My Manatee to a dedicated website to handle that, increase 311 operators and dedicated phone, phone lines for, for the assistance of those who cannot get onto the vaccine uh, appointment pool site. Our 311 operators will help them get onto, those, onto that site and get registered. Ongoing planning for additional vaccination sites provide stable, provided that we get a, supply, a stable supply chain, increasing staff utilizing the National Guard and the strike team, and increased partner participation in vaccinations. So our, our, our Region 6 strike team, as well as our National Guard dedicated to assisting counties with getting out the vaccines, are at our drive through site today, and uh, they are assisting us right now. With that, I could take some questions. Any comments you might have? Um, <laughs> Misty, go ahead. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, it's tough when everybody flashes their green comment sign. <laughs> And um, thank you for the great presentation, Jake. Um, and uh, it uh, was a little bit hard to stay focused as we keep getting messages that our capital in D.C. is under siege. Yeah. So, um, inside the capital. But, but thank you very much. So here are my questions. Um, if we were able to ramp up to 2,000 injections a day, how long would it take for us to vaccinate those 65 and older? Do you, do you know approximately? Well, if, if, I, if I had a stable supply chain of vaccinations and we were doing 2,000, 2,500 a day, um, maybe 3,000 a day, I, I think is very comfortable to say. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't foresee much like the governor's office who's directed all of his staff to work seven days a week on this. I don't, I don't see us um, shutting down. It would take uh, a little bit more scheduling it would take our, our our strike our regional strike team as well as the national guard but we would definitely get it done so if we say 2000 a day uh when we're looking at um 200,000 uh, those over 65 within the area now 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 once that's that stable supply chain becomes more readily available then we can we can uh, partner with MCR we can partner with local hospitals uh, and, and supply uh, grocery stores, pharmacies, uh, patient care centers, such as primary care physicians to get those doses out to assist us as well. Right, and I guess that's what I was thinking of, that even if we were able to ramp up, you're still looking at two to three months to vaccinate that segment of the population, unless we have additional sites. Correct. So, okay. Um, I have heard um, that Johnson & Johnson is about to come out with a, a vaccine. Do you know anything about the timing on that? No. no. Um, our EMS staff that is on these sites, are, are they off the streets or are they additional EMS staff that CARES Act is funding? No, right now it's through overtime, our paramedics. Overtime. Okay. And um, is, it, is there an opportunity to take the vaccine sites to areas where we know there is a great population of 65 and older, like trailer estates? Absolutely. Um, but I, I, will, I will caution you about that at, at the beginning stages that we are in. Um, my goal in working with Florida Department of Emergency Management, one of the things uh, in talking to the director of Florida Department of Emergency Management is we need to get these out. As soon as we, we get them in, we get them out. And, and to, to date, the fastest way to do that is still a drive-through type vaccination site. Uh, I'm very proud of what the team has done. Uh, every dose, uh, batch of doses we have gotten, we've gotten out in less than 24 to 48 hours. Good. Thank you, that's all I have. <clears throat> Commissioner Whitmore. Just a few things. First of all, is and I'm sure that IT 
may help with this part later. Um, when we when we sign up to register, uh, we'll be in a system, and we we are the ones that will be getting the calls when they're not hearing from somebody. Um, is there a way that and that on our system that the citizen could see that they still are in the system and how many people have registered and yes and, okay um, to make sure that they're still in the pool yes ma okay um, what if you get selected and you can't make that appointment when they're telling you um, right. and for me my husband and I he can't drive he can't walk more than 50 feet now so I have to take him but um, do you uh, if like my husband gets pulled and I don't how do you do that so we're, just, we're allowing family members to sign up together in hopes okay. that when, when someone in that family gets pulled they can carpool they can bring those who can't drive can't walk or non-ambulatory to the site with them unfortunately because the demand is so high if they cannot make the appointment that we're trying to schedule for them we have to move on to the next but you'll put them back in the pool if yes. they can't make the appointment okay um, you said over a hundred in the hospitals that's the highest that I think I can recall in since March or April I don't have that exact date yeah. it, it's uh, that is our highest to date that in, in recent yeah. weeks the stable ICO stable so that just means again we have a better way of treating Correct. it now because it's just high levels of oxygen you've seen other states they're running low on oxygen and stuff like that but we're are you hearing anything from all three hospitals I'd still believe that they are capable of handling what they are seeing today okay um, can you explain to the public because I, I went there when you first the first day that you opened um, when it was at the public safety can you explain to the public what the setup takes like um, the special tent you have um, I did see a photo of you and um, James Krupsfield um, mixing the vaccines last weekend <laughs> so actually it's it's all hands on deck you guys are paramedics and we are paramedics we can um, both mix up and give the vaccine and it is all hands on deck when we have it at the public safety center there wasn't anybody in their office they were assisting with that we've since got a better picture of what the staff is needed and, and how many of those staff are there um, through our IAP plan so that's going very well um, but it does take a large process to set up a, a vaccination drive-through and I think what those other counties weren't able to do so quickly is because of the partnership that we have. So our Parks and Rec Department help us set up that mass vaccination tent at, at Tom, uh, Tom Bennett Park. Our property management division cleared out some uh, low-lying shrubbage so that we can have a 15 to 30 minute wait time. I, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't say enough, the partnerships from all the departments, the Department of Health as well, um, to get this done. It, it's, um, it, in talking with Pinellas County, it's, it, it, they were amazed of what we've been able to accomplish. It does take a while to set that up. And how many uh, people from the health department are on site helping you versus our employees? Kind of what Misty was saying. I'm just curious. Takes about, I'm sure CARES Act is probably paying for overtime, correct? Hopefully. Yes. It takes about 40 employees, regardless of, of where they're from, either the county or, or us. It takes about five to six vaccinators currently we're using paramedics we're using some nurses today we're using um, the national guard and the strike team to assist us as well but it takes about 40 employees the health department uh, is doing our, our administrative side of, of florida shots getting that information that once we vaccinate into the florida shot system so we have a record of that vaccination uh, our ems department and chief crutchfield's employees are working uh, and scheduling themselves to be vaccinators um, right now, I know that there is a, a large push from the public to help, and, and we are grateful for that. Uh, employee manpower is not our problem. A vaccination supply chain is our problem. Uh, I've enter, actually entered into FloridaShots.com that the health department's doing, and uh, what and for in order for us to get our another dose of vaccines, we have they have to be entered into the system. So health department is doing that, correct? Yes, that's a lot of work. It is. Okay, and I appreciate I want Dr. Bensey to know that. Have you had any major reactions from the Moderma vaccine besides, have you had any reactions, rashes, no, anaphylaxis, No, no major reactions when we say uh, epinephrine for an anaphylaxis, none nothing. of those. We've had a few, I want to say two that I'm aware of, maybe three, of some uh, quick shortness of breath, nothing, nothing that is not easily treatable. On the news, they said Moderna, they were suggesting using half doses so we could vaccinate more people. And then on the news last night, Moderna is recommending that we don't do that because the science doesn't. 
there is no current plan to not give a second dose. There's no current plan to half a dose. Right. My last uh, question is, you, we have to vaccinate all these people within 28 days, so are you going to have a separate? I, I, I read that you're going to have somebody call the people to tell them when they can come for their second dose. Is that going to be at the same facility where you're giving them initial vaccines, or are you going to have that at another facility? So we hope once that supply chain uh, gets more stable and we're, we're doing this every day, that it's just going to be it's just going to fall in line okay. right now as we're just getting started the the second dose is a much quicker faster process we can push a lot more cars through on the second dose using our everbridge what what the public will will know as reverse 911 we have an ability to send out a text to them those who have gotten the dose uh, we have a three to four day window of when they got the dose to get the second dose. Okay. So we will send them a message. Your appointment or your date to get that second dose is, is, is upcoming. It's on this date. Um, and, and you can come between these times and they can confirm it right from their smartphone or a telephone call. Those that do not confirm, our 311 operators will give them a call, make sure they got it, make sure that they know when their second dose is due and that they can come on those days. And those second doses will be done at the public safety center. God, so it'll be separated. And I'm hearing, well, a lot of people are saying, well, you could be given thousands a day. Uh, what you've said today is you're, you don't have the vaccines to give. I do not have the vaccines. Uh, this team is ready to go. Okay. I, I told uh, I told a bunch of people, you know, this group that is in, is uh, involved in this vaccination pilot or this vaccination program. This is our 10 yard line. You know, we're looking, it's going to be a while before we get a goal. But they've been through uh, hell for the last year. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a, a, a some semblance of getting back to a normalcy. So this group is eager, uh, very eager to get everyone uh, vaccinated as fast as they can. Thank you. Okay. James, did you have something? Um, <clears throat> yes. First of all, you know, I believe in giving credit where credit's due. So uh, that's exciting, uh, moving that many people through, uh, ramping up that quickly, uh, not having the delay on actually administering the vaccine. And so constituents that have reached out to me, I kind of I made the same point. We're really doing a great job on that. Um, I am encouraged that we're going to be ready to do the standby pool. Uh, we're saying tomorrow at 10 p.m. Is that correct? I believe. Uh, I think that's what I heard was that tomorrow anyway, that we're ready to go with the standby pool or working on getting there. Um, so I just want to, uh, you know, reiterate that, encourage that. I think that's going to be good. I think that our, our people shouldn't be sitting refreshing for hours. Um, I think the people, what we'll hear is that the frustration um, that they had to do that once and then, it, and then a week later ended up with the same thing happening. But I understand um, it was a holiday and we had lots going on. So if we ramp it up, um, I'll be, you know, I'll be happy, excited to see that. Just some um, logistical questions. Is the, um, let's see, we've got Moderna and what's the other, Pfizer, is that the? Yes, sir. Okay. Is the storage and the cool, uh, you know, they say it's pretty extreme. Just Would we be able to get more vaccines if we had more cold storage or is that not the factor at all? Well, we have facilities within the county that can do ultra cold storage, which is what Pfizer requires. Mm -hmm. uh, Moderna does not require ultra cold storage. It requires normal uh, freezer temperatures. We have plenty of space for both. Okay. So that is not a limiting factor. No, sir. So at this point, the only limiting factor is the vaccines themselves. And so I would encourage um, the county to uh, go all hands on deck to make, first of all, I seriously doubt that we're going to go from 1,000 to 2,000 to 3,000. It's we could end up with 10,000 tomorrow, it seems to me, just because of the way companies operate, supply chains operate. These companies are pushing this. They want to get it out. Um, so in other words, I would like to see a plan not just to gradually ramp up, but also what if, because we need to think of these things ahead of time so that, and, and you've done a great job with that, you know. Um, so this is not a criticism. This is just uh, what I would like to see is us have a plan. What if it didn't go the gradual, steady supply chain route that we would all like to see? What if instead of that, it just jumped? And, um, I've, and I've asked for it to jump. 
<laughs> right. But but see, if I guess what I'm saying, and this is one thing I, I expressed to the county administrator, is we shouldn't just have a plan for 2000 a day. I'd like to see a plan for well over that. Um, not, I understand that we can't get that completely online because what would be the point of having you know people standing around without the vaccines? But the plan should be ready to launch um, as soon as that happens. So, so I'd like to see that. So I, I say our immediate goal of 2000 a day is very doable. If I talk to my team, a, 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 a doable goal is 5,000 a day, but you know, th there's a lot of logistics to that and I don't want to uh, encumber a roadblock um, by all means when we get a second site set up, we'll, we, we will see more than 2000 a day. That's just my immediate goal is to comfortably be able to do 2000 and get those doses in arms that I promised to people who have signed up and gotten an appointment. Um, I can tell you that the state of Florida today let us know they're only getting 240,000 doses for the entire state of Florida next week. What? It, I, don't, do, I do not believe Jeez. anyone is going to be ramping up vaccines anytime soon. Um, the other thing on what you just said, I think you may have just answered me. When you say we could do 2,000 and the team really feels like they could even do more, but you say we could do 2,000 a day, that is the, that's one site. Correct. That's, that's utilizing Bennett. two. Oh, that's, that'd be utilizing mm -hmm. two sites? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so Bennett plus one more. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, Jake. Okay. Commissioners, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead at this point and say that one thing that's been brought to my attention in getting ready to take over as chair is that we need to remember um, that when we have a commissioner who is speaking that the rest of us need to stay quiet until that commissioner is finished so that they're not interrupted. Because it does kind of break a chain of thought you know, moving forward. So I was asked to um, to mention that. So now it seemed to be a good time. Uh, Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to start off thanking our staff. As Commissioner Satcher said, give credit where credit is due, especially those who have volunteered uh, to man our vaccination site out at Bennett Park. Uh, I did visit, I was one of the commissioners who visited the site. I really saw a smooth operation running out there. Um, and I, as a result, Jake, I feel confident when you tell us that you can do 1,100 per day per site, I do feel confident in that. Um, and our staff have really done everything, you know, your staff have done everything that have been asked of them up at this point. And when it comes to boots on the ground, I think statewide we really look like rock stars at this point. I think a lot of other counties are trying to emulate what we're doing here when it comes to boots on the ground. And to be clear to the public, um, you know, there are certain aspects of this where we're doing a fantastic job. And our biggest hurdle at this point is the availability of vaccines. It's the ability to obtain more vaccines. That's the problem that we're having. Uh, I have personally advocated uh, for more vaccines with every member of our state delegation. Uh, also, you know, former pre Senate President Bill Galvano, I've spoken with all of them. And I'm, we, we as a commission, I know other commissioners have as well, they've heard through the grapevine. We are doing everything that we can to obtain more vaccines for Manatee County. Um, so I wanna be sure that we're clear on that. Uh, Jake, what, uh, one of the things that worries me is, is why a random selection out of the pool. I love the idea of a waiting list. I think it's important to go to a waiting list. People right now feel like they're in line waiting for Michael Jackson tickets, you know? Um, so, you know, if we go to a waiting list, that's you know, a much less chaotic, right? And it gives people a lot more peace of mind if they know that they're on this list. Um, but it still creates a little, a lot of unknown. When is my name going to get called? Is there a possibility? Is there a system that we could implement where, you know, when you're, when you go in, you know, that's, that's where you are first come once you're in the waiting list. Yeah. And, 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 um, director Alexander can talk about that in just a second. Um, I, I think we looked at a, a randomized selection so that those who can't get to a computer, um, and those who would stay up all hours of night trying to get onto a system to be first. It's, and, and, and when we're talking about this age population, 65 and above, and then looking at 75, 80 above, I don't want them to be, we didn't want them to be um, pushed out because they can't get to a, a 311 operator quick enough, or they can't get to a computer quick enough. And we didn't, on the backside, we didn't want another mad rush of, of, of persons bombarding the 311 center and, and, and the website that is set up for that, because, because we know it brings us to its knees, trying to get first in line, even on a waiting list. Um, but, you know, we, we, we can talk about that. We're open to, to, to different suggestions, definitely. No, to be honest, I assume that was the answer. I just wanted you to clarify it to the public for me. Okay. Um, 311 operators, you say you want to ramp up the numbers. How many do we have now, and what's your target? Our, our normal 311 staff is four persons. 
uh, oh, our IT department has set up phones and computers for uh, 30 additional persons in our emergency operations center plus those four. We can expand that should we need to at any time. Okay. Um, one more question for you is, are you planning to use the man, the, man, the fair is coming up, right? And it's an outdoor event and a lot of people are looking forward to it. Uh, are you planning to use the fairgrounds as the fair in any jeopardy of not going carrying on? No, we, I don't, we don't have any, any plans or any control to stop the fair, or, or nor, nor it's not in our plan. Wonderful. And I have one last question for you, which I have a feeling I should just address Mr. Clegg with this question. Uh, I have serious frustrations with the, our hands being tied when it comes to uh, non-residents taking you know, the, the place or vaccines of tax-paying permanent residents of this county. Um, and so I, I think I'm probably you're probably going to defer to Mr. Clegg, which is fine. But if I could get a, uh, you know, a legal, yeah, you know, happy to address that. Can, thank you. And can you all hear me all right? Am I good? Um, so, um, Madam Chair, Commissioners, uh, Chief Assistant County Attorney Bill Clegg, I think it's important for the board to understand. And I mean, as you're as you're well aware, these these vaccinations are distributed through the State Department of Health to the county. And what I think the public doesn't always recognize because it's pretty confusing is how the relationship works between this board and the Manatee County Department of Health that is receiving those vaccinations from the state. County health departments are created by contract between the State Department of Health and individual counties and they're governed by part one of chapter 154 Florida statutes. That chapter sets forth the rules of how those health departments operate. And it's very clear, there's one particular section, 15404, which states the personnel of a county health department shall be employed by the Department of Health. So they're not actually our employees, they're actually, they're in the Manatee County Health Department, but they're state employees. And it also states, such employees shall engage in the prevention of disease, such as vaccinations, and the promotion of health under the supervision of the Department of Health. So they are not under the supervision of our county administrator or this board. They're basically a state agency that is housed within Manatee County. The first time I dealt with this as a young lawyer, it was a stumper. I mean, I, I was presented with something from a county and I didn't understand why we would be entering into an agreement with a department of the county. But in fact, it is a state agency housed within the county. So what Jake's been talking about is the cooperation that we've been engaging with the Manatee County Health Department to roll out this vaccination. So we're providing staffing services, appointments, sites, and we can certainly continue to do that in dialogue with the state about how the vaccinations are distributed and who gets them. But it is a state decision. It is not a decision this board can make. And if you look at the news stories around the state, there's one as recently as this morning about an issue in Hernando County where a county commissioner had to explain to the public that the county's Department of Health is a state agency housed within the county and they make those decisions. We do not. So does that answer your question, sir? It does. All I right. appreciate it. I Thank hope the, uh, the media will print that in an yes, easy sir. to understand fashion okay. for us. Uh, and that's my final question. Thank you. Commissioner Bellamy. All right. My question number one was explain for the community on why bike scenes are not just for Manatee County residents. It's because of the state. And that's the bottom line. Am I that correct? is correct. Am I correct? Yes, sir. That is a state decision, not right. a county decision. So I want to get back to the um, the bike scene study pool as far as the online registration and the 311 call center um, just for clarity. Um, and I did speak with um, the county administrator and Jake on this, but I want to make sure I'm clear on where we are as far as being able to reach um, the constituents as far as that are Spanish and that speak Creole. Can we have some conversation on that? Did we get that accomplished? Yes, sir. So our, our 311 operators, we do have Spanish speaking 311 operators as well. Um, Creole, if someone were to call that needed Creole, we have an interpreter service that 911 uses, public safety uses all day long and we would be able to institute that as well. On the website itself, it has, we've added a translate button at the top on the, on the new COVID vaccine site uh, that will translate it into over 140 different languages, I believe is the number. 
Um, the uh, Department of Health waiver that you asked for is also in Spanish uh, on the website as well. But not Creole? No, sir. And do we have a plan on addressing that, or do we have the ability to address that? And the reason why I'm asking, and I know our numbers of as far as percentage of community members in, um, that speak that language are not where they need to be to justify it, but we still have those individuals in our community, and some are 65 or older, and they still may need some assistance. That's why I'm asking, do we have a plan? Yes, sir. That document comes from the Florida Department of Health, and I will request those documents as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, just listening to your number as far as the 240,000 uh, vaccines that are about to be distributed amongst the 67 um, states, um, when the chair um, got on me and Kevin <laughs> for, for, for talking, um, while someone else was talking, I apologize, hopefully I didn't offend nobody, we basically broke that number down. <laughs> we, we basically broke that number down, and it's 3,582. Um, if you do it for the 67 counties of the 240,000, um, but we do know um, some of the certain the southern counties as far as Dade and, and Broward, you know, may pull um, a little bit more. So what I'm what I'm thinking about is our um, projected plan for receiving uh, more allotments. And, and we kind of talked about that, but I think if we can um, elaborate on that a little bit more so the community members are, are be aware of that, I think that'll put us in a better um, situation. We receive a lot of emails day in and day out with frustration, but more important, they want to know what the next steps are and the opportunities. And just for us identifying that we have a plan to fix the problem, um, if I was a community member, I, I would listen to that plan, but I still would want to be guided as far as what are my next steps so I can know um, how to move forward based on my personal schedule or how to help my grandma to make sure she get a vaccine and things like that. So could you help us um, with that? A little bit. Probably was all over the place, weren't I? <laughs> if, if you're over, if you're over 65 and you, and you want to get the vaccine, once we roll out this new website and the vaccine waiting pool, they need to get onto that vaccine waiting pool. Okay. Um, and and I, I, I've made a promise to everyone that's asked me is as soon as I get doses in, as soon as Dr. Bensey's team gets doses in, we get them right back out. That is the number one priority. And I and I just conclude about a little bit of the frustration for 311. And I guess when we hear from you all, it, it'll be clear. That, will the, are the hours 24 hours a day for 311? No, sir. So okay. because, because we're, we're using a randomized pool, um, there, there's not a mad rush to get, uh, to get onto that website or call 311. So 311 will operate its normal business hours, 8 to 5 every day, Monday through Friday, uh, to assist those who can't get onto the website to get on the vaccine waiting pool. Okay. Thank you for now. All right, and just for the record, I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> Next time I'll let you know, though. <laughs> Commissioner Cruz. Yeah, I'll be quick. These are more just uh, curiosity questions. Uh, first, more of a statement. I, I agree uh, wholeheartedly with the, the lottery system versus the wait list system. It's, mm -hmm. You're exactly right. One of the big problems we've had is just capacity of our IT. And we, we can't ramp up the IT fast enough to do it, nor does it make sense. It's like building a parking lot for Black Friday. I mean, it's kind of a one-time event. Uh, but a lottery gives everyone the opportunity equally. But, uh, but two things with that. We still need to get people into this lottery system, number one. And number two, we still need to account for the fact that there are some people coming into this lottery that are clearly at a much higher risk than a typical 65-year-old. They're 85-year-olds with multiple pre-existing conditions that, that we can't just put them at the front of the line, but um, so, so my two thoughts that, that maybe you can tell me whether or not they're being implemented or thought about is, one, is there a way of creating some sort of a kind of a sign-up event to get people on this thing? Like, for instance, the school board has buses with hotspots all over the place. In fact, they've already done the legwork. They know what parts of Manatee County are lacking Internet access. That's where the buses are parked right now. Mm. They already have hotspots in there. Is there a way of putting one or two laptops on these buses for a week with some people to assist to get people in those areas like the Rabonias and places like that signed up without needing internet or overloading our 311 system. That's a good idea. And then using, say, like Veterans Hall at the, at the fair, maybe have one booth with, with one laptop, giving people 65 or older who are attending the fair an opportunity while they're there in person to sign up. I think these are all excellent ideas, yeah, excellent. and I will look into those. Uh, and, and the second thing is, there are people that are much older. You're 85-year-old. They can go in a lottery. They could end up 
getting pulled at 90,000 on our list to not get in until April. Is there a way, and maybe not from a state standpoint, but I don't think it's true, that we can take, say, some percentage of our daily amount? It doesn't have to be a high percent, 10 percent, 20 percent, and say, okay, 80 percent of our daily allowance is going into this lottery. The other 20 percent is a first come, first serve. We don't want to make people like Lee County sit in their cars at 5 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning waiting. But there are people who are so desperate for this vaccine for real reason that they'd be willing to do that. They're few and far between, but some people just have to be towards the front of this list. If we had some percentage, even if it was 10 percent, 20 percent, where we say that group is first come, first serve at this site. And if you really, really need it, if you're really, really concerned, then you get in that line. Is there a way of us doing that, or are we precluded from breaking this up into like a bifurcated system of distribution? This, this is a, another great question that's been posed to the state from another county that on the call that I was on, um, and, and they said that is not the governor's order. The governor's order is 65 and older. Right. Um, I will repose that on the state call mm -hmm. to see if they, they can change or if they have better thoughts now that when this starts to get rolling, uh, how that could work. Commissioner Cruz, I know you have the floor. Can I have two sentences? Possibly a prescription from a doctor would move them to the front of the line as just an option. Thanks. It's not a bad idea. Every doctor. Yeah. yeah. That, that was it. Those are those two thoughts. One, having some sort of like a legitimate sign up thing, because again, those buses are available. Two, just finding some way of allowing people that really, really need it, not just your average 65 year old who just got done running around playing pickleball for three hours that just feels like getting vaccinated because they need to get in the lottery at some point and they just happen to get pulled first. Meanwhile, right. the person who's like been quarantining since February is getting pulled 100,000th. Yes. Um, there, right. there should be some way of allowing them at least the option of getting towards the front, even if it takes them a little more effort. I most, cer I most certainly agree with you, yes, sir. Okay. And Dr. Bensey, if you would. Thank you so Make much. Comments, can, can you hear me all? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioner's leadership. Um, we did discuss that on a, a Department of Health call about tiering even, starting perhaps with 80 and above, then 75 and above, and, and um, that was not ex accepted. Um, but we, we did talk about that, and so we will bring it up again. Um, and if I could just reiterate um, that, again, um, as state employees, uh, we do work for the governor, and, and these decisions are being made by the governor. Uh, and because we are an integrated Department of Health, unlike most states, um, the, the goal is to be standardized across the state mm -hmm. in how we operate, uh, and then also obviously address the uh, local issues as they arise and um, are unique to our county. Um, but I have to say in my 25 years with the Department of Health, um, this is the, the, the best county I've ever worked in in terms of partnerships. It's unbelievable. We work together through hurricanes, but we do take an all hazards approach to our planning throughout the years. And so we've done H1N1, we've done other um, infectious diseases. And so I, I, I say thank you. And, and I also want to just explain too that um, our staff um, have been working as well. Uh, there's a lot that goes on in, in those buses that you saw. Uh, we have to upload all the information into what's known as Florida Shots within 24 hours. So it goes into the system and then it's uploaded. So the staff are actually working there and then at the health department till 10 at night. So I want to give them credit as well as those at the front who are uh, bringing people in, the monitors, the uh, volunteers fall under the Medical Reserve Corps, which we also take care of. Um, we thank you because of the CARES funding and, and prior events we've been able to uh, uh, build our capacity with our vehicles. We have the MERV, the uh, mobile unit to, to move people around, a mobile ambulance is out there, the tents, all of that as well. So I want to make sure everyone understands that uh, my team, we did have four days off uh, at the governor's request, but we did not choose to do that. We worked. And um, I also want to mention those contact tracers that are still calling everyone who's positive. We have almost 24,000 individuals. And Commissioner, I uh, will end with saying the recovery rate today is 88 point eight percent so um, yes thank you dr. Ben thank my you. apologies that I missed that last time <laughs> but um, but nevertheless we're a small team a mighty team and and I think all of us together uh, who are responders and involved in this process uh, will be able to continue this but we do need to add our partners and MCR just like they've helped us so much in the testing capabilities they've actually assisted us one quarter of those tested in the county, which is 40% though total of our county residents uh, were tested through 
the federally qualified health center. So as soon as they get the vaccine, they've been waiting uh, for the last week. Uh, they are told now they may not get it for another two weeks. As soon as they get it, they will vaccinate their team and then be able to assist us at their 20 plus locations throughout the county um, as they did through the testing. So the model is to, to look similar to what we have already done in that regard. And then my team eventually will taking the mobiles out like we do now to the migrant communities, to the mobile home parks, the 55 plus communities. So the plan is in place. Uh, the rate limiting step at this point continues to be the vaccine. Thank you, Dr. Bensi. Um, Jake, did you want to go ahead and have Paul give his presentation before we have any more questions Can I coming ask, forward? A just a minute, it's Commissioner not Whitmore. Just, just a minute. Asking, just yes or no? Just a moment. Okay. Because what I'm what I'm hearing, the majority of questions that I'm hearing now is in reference to probably what Paul would be talking about. So that's why I'm wondering. And Commissioner Whitmore, I'll get back with you in just a minute. Madam Chair. Mine's health. I had a question for Ms. Bensi, is that possible? Uh, yes, please. Well, is that, uh, she, she wouldn't let me, but she's like, you. Go ahead, Commissioner Can I after you, Bellamy. please, Madam Chair? Go ahead. No, Commissioner Bellamy has been yeah, recognized. I know. Oh, okay, and I just want to, to, to ask a question to follow up about the distribution and coming from MCR because I spoke to um, Mr. Carnegie a couple of days ago, and I actually talked to Jake about also as far as would MCR have the ability to support because they've done so well as far as the testing. And um, I think Mr. Carnegie is excited about the opportunity to continue to impact the community in the way MCR has. Um, what would need to take place in order for them to be able to support? I, from what I understand, they have to get their staff vaccine first. I do, I did understand that. But after that, again, we fall back to the same issue as far as waiting on the allotments and then having them partner with us so we can, do, so they can help um, distribute the vaccine. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And we already have the agreements in place. There, there's an agreement of, with every medical provider who does immunizations. They have to be members of Florida Shots. But those agreements have already been in place. Uh, we've had a long time agreement with MCR, obviously, because they put that data in the system themselves. So at this point, they are ready to go once they get the vaccine, vaccinate their staff, and then decide how they're going to do it in, in, internally uh, in their, for their process. Uh, but again, to assist the community and to assist us. Right, and I just wanted to just see was I understanding that clearly. Thank you, Madam Chair, for allowing me to, the dialogue. Absolutely. Commissioner Whitmore, one question. Uh, I've got a question. One. Um, Jake, oh no, uh, you don't have to wipe the mic. Dr. Bensey, after 28 days, they have to get the booster, like you said. Well, we just heard that the state was given 279,000 for the whole state. How can we be guaranteed that we'll be able to get that 28 day? I know everybody's saying we're getting guaranteed. Well, we just heard what you said. And 28 days, I think Jake and them are probably close, to, and some of you guys are getting close to get your second shot. How are we gonna get guaranteed when when they did the math and it's 3,000 something per county. Right, so again, we've been told by Tallahassee um, that, that there uh, will be the separate allocation for the second dose. And it's 28 days plus or minus a few days for the Moderna and the Pfizer um, is 21 days and they are, you correct, starting next week for those who received the Pfizer vaccine. But that is being done through Tallahassee, uh, again, to make sure that the match is correct and they have the uh, appropriate numbers to send to us for the second doses. Thank you. Um, and before, Paul, before you start, if you don't mind, are we showing the numbers for the citizens to call if they have any questions when, when we get to commissioner's com uh, uh, comments? Absolutely, Madam Chair. Okay, Our I just wanted to make sure. METV will place the details on the screen. Thank you. Okay. Paul, yes, go okay. ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for, for the record, uh, my name is Paul Alexander, and I'm the Director of Information Technology Services. Uh, I'd like to start uh, by, to thanking Jake, wherever he went. Okay. Um, we have a very uh, tightly integrated uh, team between our IT team and, and Jake. And uh, he keeps us pretty busy. Uh, our major goal is to try to stay out in front of him, and at times that's difficult to do. Uh, but uh, we've learned a lot together over the last week, and, and that's what I want to share with you and uh, a new process of how we would like to approach this that we think can help the, help the overall cause. Um, I'd like to start um, by just telling you a little bit about how our county website, uh, mymanatee.org works. This is a cloud service. We do actually don't host that here on site and my group doesn't maintain that. 
Um, it is hosted by Civic Live under contract as a cloud service, as many of our business services are. Uh, we have a lot of business apps that we support in that way. What we do host on site is what's called a firewall. That firewall, think of it as a portal to the outside, to the web. It's very important, it serves a multitude of functions, but everything that goes in and out goes through that firewall and it's put there and tuned uh, in a way that protects us from cybersecurity threats and other things that we have to pay very close attention to. Um, that portal to the outside also filters and acts as sort of a traffic cop for web traffic. And over the last week, with the huge demand, it's that firewall, that traffic cop, that was constrained. Um, the hardware, as I mentioned again, is sized and tuned to support daily operations, but we also build into it excess capacity, and actually our high water mark is what we experienced during Hurricane Irma. Uh, at that point in time, we saw the most uh, traffic that we've ever seen uh, in support of that hurricane. To put this in some perspective for you, on a, on a daily um, and actually a weekly average of web pages that are served up to the public, it's roughly about 100,000 web pages per week. What we saw on January 5th in one day over a six hour period was 371,000 web pages. Uh, and that's the constraint that uh, everybody was frustrated with, including ourselves, because we just bottomed out. So the question would be is, is twofold. What can we do technically to eliminate that constraint? Uh, and what can we do programmatically through process uh, to eliminate the same? Um, from a technical standpoint, essentially what we did was we offloaded um, and we leveraged more cloud services. We augmented and actually have shifted about 50% of our internet traffic onto a new platform. We've already realized significant improvement uh, in the, uh, the web traffic as a result of that. And there are other actions that we're gonna continue to take as we work with Jake and his team and monitor how we're, how we're doing. Again, this isn't a, an exact science because we can't always predict exactly what kind of demand we're gonna have. We're just trying to stay out in, in front of it. But we're very confident uh, that we've eliminated this technical constraint. Um, so then that leads us to what do we do with the business process? Because remember, while we can eliminate that constraint, you still have the resident, whether calling or, or coming in through the internet from either a business or a home, goes through their PC, their firewall, their internet service provider, Spectrum, Verizon, Frontier, and so forth, and they're experiencing the same demand on the system that we were. Uh, so we can't fix that, but our process can. And so that's what I wanna talk about next, is in working with public safety and information okay. outreach, uh, we would like to uh, change what we're doing today. So let me describe what we have done today. We've received vaccine, and we've only had a couple of shipments of those, and when we have, we have communicated out to the public to access this uh, website and to, um, yeah, to access this website um, and to go ahead and schedule an appointment. Um, and so what we've seen, the impact of that is, is, a, is a massive short-term surge uh, on our systems it has disadvantaged uh, many who have not had either PCs or internet access. And by the time they call into the 311 system, all the slots have, have, have been taken. Uh, and overall frustration for those that have been unable to, to schedule uh, appointments. What we're proposing to do is, is this. And I would describe it as a, as a pre-registration. It's irrespective of the vaccine. By internet, we'll open up a completely different website with a new form on there that takes some very minor information. First name, last name, are you over 65, and, and so forth. Um, they will get, whether through the internet, seven by 24, 
or by calling into 311 during Jake's business hours as he mans the 311 station, they will get an immediate confirmation number that indicates that they have now been put into a pool. That does a, a couple of things. Either way, whether they call into 301 or by the internet, they'll get a confirmation number. If they supply an email, they'll actually get an email confirmation. But this time, when the vaccine is received, there won't be a, a, a mad rush to book for uh, appointments. Rather, what we'll do is, through random selection, Jake and his team will use the Eventbrite system internally. That's not something that the public will access, just his people will access it. And they will go down randomly through the, the, the pool and reach out by the contact information that is provided to the citizens and work with them to schedule an appointment and spouses if they've indicated that and, and so forth. The one thing I'd like to mention about the form, the way we're designing this, it's for change. So if we decide we need to collect different information or more information or sort it differently, we can easily do that. It's separate from the reservation system. Jake will do that to schedule the appointments internally. That will generate a ticket, which they bring with their ID, then to, to get the vaccination. That's different than the registration process will be on a new website that can be done seven by 24, five days a week, and it doesn't require you to, to rush. We think that the, uh, the overall impact that that will have is it will eliminate that big spike in demand that we've seen in that short period of time. Um, it will randomize, making essentially it more equitable for citizens that don't have uh, internet or PC capability. Uh, but it will also eliminate multiple calls because not only are the citizens frustrated by keep calling back in, but every time they do that, they're contributing to the, to the traffic that we're seeing. So if we can do this once and, and be done, that will also dampen the, uh, the curve. And also the other benefit is they will get an immediate confirmation uh, that they are in that standby uh, pool. And uh, we are prepared with our mutual teams between Jake and, and, uh, and my team uh, to be in a position tomorrow uh, evening to be able to roll this out. We're actually testing it now. Uh, it's looking good. And as I say, if we need to make course corrections on that or any other changes as we learn more uh, through this process, uh, we'll work with Jake and enable that and allow that to happen. Uh, Paul, do you need us to vote on that today? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes, we would like to change that process as, as soon as, as, soon as, as, soon as possible. possible. Okay. Yeah, we think yeah. that that will be a huge help, not only technically, uh, but uh, uh, just from an overall process standpoint. Well, obviously, what we've been doing, we've been great out in the field. I think, you know, everybody mm -hmm. has recognized that fact. I mean, we've done a great job. Mm -hmm. It's We can't seem to keep people online, though. That yeah. just doesn't seem to work for us. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Van Austin Bridge. Thank you. Uh, Paul, thank you for your service to the county. My first question is a two-part question. What is the capacity of our website now? What can it handle now? And if you make some changes in the future, what will it be able to handle then? What kind of traffic? We essentially, by using cloud services, can scale our website to <clears throat> any, any level. Um, and it's, it's not easy to, to give you a definitive answer of what capacity we have. It depends on what they're doing. How long do they stay? How deep into the internet do they go? How many pages is each one rendering and so forth? Each experience is a little bit different. And that's why I say it's not an exact science. We monitor and we tune this on a daily, weekly, monthly basis and look for those peaks and valleys. There are certain days that are heavier than others. There are certain times during the days that are heavier than others. And we're able to scale our systems to, uh, to accommodate that. In this case, we were looking at orders of magnitude beyond anything we've ever seen. Ever seen, but is it beyond anything we would ever be capable of handling? My, my concern is that at an administrative level, we've known that a vaccine was coming for months, mm -hmm. and when the day came, we were caught flat-footed. And then one week later, we're in the same position, and we're caught flat-footed again. Mm -hmm. So if things could have been changed, and things could have been done to increase the capacity, were they done? What was done in the week between the initial launch and the and this past Monday? 
to, to improve you know, the ability of the site to handle the volume? Well, the really short answer, Commissioner, is, is we, we did not anticipate exceeding the thresholds that we saw in Hurricane Irma. That was the highest thing that we have ever seen. Um, and, and we blew right past that, again, by orders of magnitude. So the only thing that we, we could do is offload and augment the, the, the system, which we've taken actions to do that. We are actually in production on that as we speak. That's my concern. We, so we did nothing to prepare for a surge of site hits prior to the, the launch of the vaccine. We didn't anticipate that demand. Did you have conversations with Ms. Corrier or Mr. Sauer about possible uh, spiked capacity, you know, spiked um, usage of the site prior to, or in the week between the first uh, vaccine launch and the second? I had no idea there were any vaccines coming at all, and or partnering with the Department of Health. So. Uh, I don't know what, what direction we're headed in here, but we know that we can manage what's about to come. Um, we, um, we are a partner in this, and as Dr. Bensey mentioned, now we know what the capacities are. Um, I wanted to mention, too, while I'm here, is that um, the form that's been created by the staff that's been put in place has some more information in it, too. So in anticipation of potential changes on behalf of the governor, if he does make changes to the um, executive orders, let's say changes of an age or possibly residency or some other format, we feel that we have the ability then to be able to sort that that pool without making people uh, contact again. And then lastly, let me just say, um, there was an anticipation, I believe, that there might be about 100,000 people that are 65 and over in our community. Um, of course, we weren't aware exactly of what that meant. But now, with this open pool like we'll have, we will have a better idea of what the need is locally. We'll be able to relay that to Dr. Bensey and relay that to the state so that if it's 50,000 people that are really interested in getting a vaccine and they're all in our pool will know that's what our big target number is. There may be people that do not believe in taking a vaccine. Sure. And we may have, you know, thought that that number was higher. There may be people that will leave the area and go back to their home state and not be here. So we're, we're excited about being able to have a number within a pool that we also have some other characteristics and statistics that we can look at. So we think we're ready for that now. Okay, and I, I think this is a much better plan moving forward. I think this will eliminate the you know the lottery system, which is was the huge spike, which of course caused the crash. Um, but as Ms. Corrier pointed out, uh, as new age groups are opened up, we could be looking at at spikes again in the future. And of course, we know even though we're going to call it you know sort of a, a an open enrollment period, you know that's sort of infinite. As soon as you open it, you're going to get a huge spike in traffic on the website. Absolutely. Um, and, right, and so, you know, are we going to be prepared prepared for that spike? Are we going to be prepared for future spikes? Um, you know, th that's looking forward. I, I am also very concerned of the fact that we had a big spike, you know, when the first vaccine came out, and we had an entire week. And this this wasn't an unknown thing. We knew we were going to get more vaccines, and that we were going to have to do another lottery system. We knew that was the system that we were using. So, in during that week. Was anything done to increase the capacity of the website to prevent the sort of chaos that took place on Monday? I mean, we're all getting hundreds of emails from residents who are angry about um, the experience that they had on Monday when they were trying to register themselves for the vaccine. Yes, we started planning what's in place now, not in every aspect, but in what's in place now. But we didn't know we were going to get any more vaccines. We don't know. You know, we didn't know we were going to get an additional 1,400. That just happened. Dr. Bensey can con concur with that. That just, just was created. So. You, you didn't think that this county was going to get any more vaccines after that? You thought that was the only 3,000 vaccines we would get? Within the week. Okay. okay. I assure you we'll be getting more vaccines. Well, and yes, this, we're aware right. of that. But okay. I, I think your, uh, your, your question is, were we working on trying to make the system better? And that's why we're here today. We were. Okay, so between the first Monday and the last Monday, my question is, what was done? And I still haven't gotten an answer on that. I believe we've explained it. Um, we, we started working on looking at the access. We've done the three, we've put in 30 new, well, 26 new call lines at the 311 center. It's not unlike a, an emergency when we have a hurricane or something. We have to ramp up, and it depends on the amount. So we have we have expanded all of that. I was speaking directly to website capacity. 
I, yes. I, I can answer that. Oops. <laughs> Commissioner, if you are asking me if a week went by without us attending to this, I can tell you without hesitation the answer to that question is no. Uh, we receive during the course of any day um, any number of things um, that fail or that struggle or that have problems. And based upon their priority, we react accordingly. When we saw this happen over this last week, we have contracted with Cloudflare. Cloudflare is a service uh, that we've put in place and we tested through our change control system over the past couple or three days that basically is diverting what we call DNS traffic out of our current firewall and out into the cloud to alleviate or free up resources on the inside. The other thing that we have done is with our firewall, think of that as a, as a pie. And there are many business applications, a cella, library system, the web service itself, that all consume resources. We have reappropriated, taken from one and applied to the other um, to, again, try to free up additional resources. We're also looking at distributed content management. We don't think we're going to have to take that step, uh, but uh, we're prepared to do that. The other thing that we did is we stripped off the registration process using uh, our service gov contract and created this new form which basically pulls it out of the Eventbrite system that was struggling as well. And so now this new form is, is on a completely separate web, web form and we're going to host that out in the cloud and essentially bypass the, the constraint that we had internally. There are probably about five or six other technical things that, uh, that we are looking at. Um, all of these things are configuration things that we follow through process, and we have to be very careful about how we do that tuning in those changes, because if we take from here, then we affect something else. <coughs> As this website was being affected for the vaccines, it was also affecting other internal business systems in public works, utilities, and so forth. And so we had to do something to offload that, that load. And that's what we've been working on for the last, last week with Jake's team, my team, and information outreach. Uh, the culmination of that is the plan that I just presented. Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear, sir. People are very angry. They're frustrated. Mm -hmm. And you know, they're not seeing or hearing what is being done to correct the issues that we've had with the rollout. Well, I, I appreciate your, your question. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go next because I haven't really asked many questions. Jake, I do have one that I think probably you would answer. Um, you know, w when you were showing the charts, you were talking, don't, mm, go ahead. Sorry. When you were showing the charts, you were talking about the spikes, you know, how we've had the spikes before. And I'm curious, just, I'm just curious, have we noticed any um, um, habits there where maybe it's happening, you know, we get a spike after a certain amount of time, or is there anything that you're seeing in this spike? Because I think we've had, what, three others uh, while this has been going on. Have you come up or noticed anything, or, or Dr. Bensi, that's kind of, um, you know, similar that we can maybe look at next time to try and, and expect a, a spike? Perhaps. Absolutely. Uh, what we've seen locally, statewide, around the country is after the holidays. Uh, opportunities for persons to travel, get together with larger groups, whether it be family, friends. Um, we also saw it when the, the uh, students went back to college. So when you have that opportunity to mingle more than uh, the average day when you're you know, wearing your mask, social distancing, um, that's when we see the spikes. And it runs be usually three to 14 days after is when you see those numbers increase when people become positive. Okay. All right. I was just curious on that. And then um, I guess that's it, Jake. That was my only question for you. Sorry. Uh, but, Paul, yep. um, 
I think these are some very good questions that Commissioner Van Ostenbridge brought up because, you know, I mean, you know we've gotten an awful lot of unhappy citizens where they've tried over and over and over again to be able to make a reservation. And it's very frustrating for them, plus they're scared. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you understand. And I know that after this, I know that um, everyone has talked about that there's going to be a press release. I'm assuming that you already have it together so that you know what it's going to say and so forth. And, and you think, Paul, that this would be able, if we vote on this today, you will have it ready to start tomorrow evening mm -hmm. are, are you saying like at five o'clock or T 10 p.m oh 10 p.m tomorrow night okay it's later than i thought okay now i, I gotta ask you this mm -hmm. because you know i mean this comes this is your baby mm -hmm. how comfortable mm -hmm. do you feel mm -hmm. that this is not going to crash again once we start it tomorrow night at 10 o'clock do you if, feel, I mean, where are you coming from on that? Because the citizens need to be, they need to know. Here's what I can tell you. There was a constraint. We fixed that. And I have the highest confidence that that isn't going to occur again. What I cannot uh, predict is what it looks like from a resident's PC through their internet service provider, through their firewall to our county website <laughs> I, I can't control that. Yeah. Um, but we believe with the contractor that we've got with ServiceGov that we can independently create those forms at the threshold that we need to. We have scaled the 311 center um, where we have added 10 additional stations. We now have 30 telecommunication stations and a queue of 50, which means we can carry 80 simultaneous calls. Um, Will we hit a threshold with that? <laughs> I, I can't predict that. Um, on that system, if we have to scale further, that's going to be a little bit more painful because we're starting to max out our telecommunication systems. On the web side, uh, there are still other compensatory things that we could do. Uh, we will be monitoring this very closely. If we see any constraint, we'll, we'll, we'll fix it. But I will say this, by changing the process, uh, if somebody is not able to, to, to get in, uh, there, there doesn't need to be a mad rush uh, as there was before when, when uh, you know, we advertised, okay, it's open for enrollment, and when they're gone, they're gone. Uh, this is something that is going to be essentially open-ended, uh, and uh, while I do expect that there will be a, a, a blip at the beginning of, of that, I do expect that to, to levelize out. At least that's what the intent is. The combination of those things over the last week is what we've been able to do to try to address this. Uh, and I think they're all reasonable. Uh, they make good technical and, and business sense. If we've got to go further, we'll do what we have to do to respond to it. Okay. And, and you know, that being said, uh, Paul, thank you. Because mm -hmm. I think right now our citizens just need to feel that we really are doing the very best we can do to try to make sure this program works. Um, I can tell you, it, some of the emails we're getting, oh, I was on the phone most of the weekend, as I know some other commissioners were, with our legislators, uh, with uh, President Bill Galvano and, and others, and some lobbyists uh, that are in this room or were, um, you know, it, just asking everybody, how can, we, how can we get the vaccine? How can we get the vaccine? Mm -hmm. And I think that if we recall back in March, I think it was March, you know, we were sitting back then. I, I know that uh, the county administrator and I had a phone call at 8 o'clock in the morning, one Saturday morning, uh, about testing, testing, testing. And here we are again. We're kind of back in the same place we were, except now we're talking about the vaccine. So I think it's probably, and, and this is what I'm hoping you can say yay or nay on this, I don't know, but I think as we move forward and we get more vaccine into this country, uh, you know, perhaps we'll get to the point where we can do like we did with the testing and we can start buying. Uh, the county can literally buy some of the vaccine uh, to be distributed to our citizens, kind of like we did with the testing, you know, getting tests in to, for people to be tested. So I, I guess we're, we're just right now in, in such an early stage of this vaccine that we're, we're going to have to be patient whether we like it or not. Is that fair to say, yeah. Dr. Benseed? whichever would like to help me with that. Absolutely. Um, 
you know, right now, um, the, the federal government is obviously not going to let anyone compete with them uh, oh, buying no. a vaccine. Heck, no. um, I, I can tell you, uh, it, it's still going to be our mission, goal, and promise. As soon as we get vaccines in, we get them right back out. I know, I know, and and I got to tell you, I've never been so proud. Um, you know, of, of our people here at the county, you know, that's been out in the field and Dr. Bensey's group, everybody's worked so hard out in the field um, to make sure that it was a smooth process. And we've, we've received a lot of wonderful emails from citizens that talked about what a great experience that they've had. So we've just got to get that website taken care of. And, and Paul, I'm sure you're on it and I'm sure you've got it straight because if not, you know, but I'm sure it's good. You've got this. I know you do. Uh, Misty, next. Yes. Thank that was you. a joke, by the way. Don't. Thank you. Don't um, y'all two take it too serious. It was a joke. Um, I hate to make you wipe down the mic again, um, but I do have a question for Paul. And I, I, I'll stand and, back. And Paul, I want to. I want to start by saying um, thank you because I know that our IT department is one of the finest in the state. Thank you for your crisis management. It has not been easy. It's been a, a major technological challenge. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And, and I will share that with, uh, with my team when I get back. Yeah, um, definitely. And I, I'm sure what we're hearing is that leveling the demand seems to be the secret. And so I expect that things will be um, a little bit smoother as we go forward. But I think it's important for everyone to remember that this county has led the state in this effort. I mean, I don't even think Pinellas County started vaccines until today. Is that right, Dr. Bensey? That is correct. So we had people from Pinellas, from Hillsborough, coming here, much to the chagrin of our residents, because we were the ones getting these vaccines out. So, I mean, I just think it's been a Herculean effort by everyone here, and I want to say thank you. My question, Paul, is um, the ticket that you describe, does it have to be printed out or can it be an electronic ticket? Uh, if there is on the form, at least the way the form is now, and again, that can be changed, um, it's optional that they put an email address in there. If they, get, uh, if they do that, then they'll get an email confirmation and so forth. If they don't have a PC and they call into 311, for instance, they'll get the equivalent of a, of a will call number. Um, they'll get the number over the phone. They can write that down, bring that reservation number with them along with their ID, uh, and that's the way that would be handled. So no, they don't have to have it electronically. It's just a convenience if they do. Yeah, that's fantastic because uh, I heard a lot of complaints about no access to printers yep. and access to PCs, et cetera. Okay, thank you again. Yep. Excellent job. Thank you. Commissioner Bellamy. Oh, yeah, maybe some comments more than um, questions. I think where, where we are uh, within the midst of the pandemic, I think it needs to be clear that we are encountering a lot of first times um, right here. And with us encountering um, those first times, we're going to have some, 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 some stumbling blocks and some learnings. I, I do agree uh, with, with a lot of the questions and the comments that's going on, but we do need to be mindful of some things that's out there. Um, for example, I know of, of a friend that has four siblings and they were trying to get their parents signed up and that family had not only the children but also the grandchildren calling, <laughs> emailing, right? as well as trying to get on the website. And again, that is kind of what's impacting, in my opinion, sir, some of that capacity issue that we may, that we may be having. That is, is one. The other one, because we were able to lead in this, the other counties, as far as Pinellas, some of their residents were also, from what I understand, is my mic on? Can yep. everyone hear me? From some, some of their residents from um, Pinellas and Hillsborough County were also dialing out 311, also going on our website, as well as using other family members to say, hey, let's look and see what the leaders are doing. <laughs> Let's look and see what the leaders are doing in, in Manatee County. And, and what, what I want to do is to make sure um, it's, it's very clear on how we, we commend our, our leadership, but also we support them for the efforts and the strides that they're making. We all know that we have a very, very challenging time 
here because we want to make sure that whatever, whether it's a thousand or three thousand, as far as the vaccines that we have, we get them out, and we are making sure that we address our residents. However, because of what we learned from our um, chief attorney, Mr. Clegg, it's not just our residents that we're dealing with. We're dealing with the state of Florida residents. Yep. And, and therefore, when you're dealing with the state of Florida residents, and please do not exclude snowbirds. Please do not exclude them because they're coming and going as well as their family members want to make sure that they get signed up and everything like that. In my opinion, that's very, very difficult to gauge in numbers. That's a big number to get prepared for. That is a lot of know-how, and I'm not necessarily sure because this is our first time encountering that. We've had enough testing in this particular area for us to take and say, okay, we're stamped and ready. But we do know other counties believe in the way that we're leading and everything like that, and their residents are coming and say, hey, let's take a look at what the leaders are doing. So as we continue to, to move forward, as we continue to move forward, um, we, we will support our, our, our staff and all of the hard work. I mean, I think it's a tough issue. To, to, to be out there, you know, people doing the testing and making sure the vaccines and things go in a line. And, and the ones that are on the front line, I always tell people, um, thank you for the work that they do. But today was better than yesterday. And I strongly believe tomorrow will be better than today. And I think if we move forward with that, with, with, with that, with that approach, we definitely got to cross T's and dot I's, but if we move forward with that approach, we're going to conquer this, and we're going to get as many of our res residents um, vaccinated as quickly as we possibly can based on our number of allotments that we receive. And I think that's important for us to keep that out there. Thank you. All right, at this time, I don't see any other cards, so we're going to go ahead and take a... James, one more. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Sorry, I just had one, a couple of questions for uh, Paul. And then we'll, uh, this issue will hopefully be to rest. But I just want to, before we move on, I want to understand it. You said that um, by your measuring, uh, we had 100,000 hits to the website at Irma. That was a spike. No, what we see what, is uh, 100,000 uh, web pages that are served up average on a weekly basis. Okay, so 100,000 per week. What it, mm -hmm. And then but we had 371 when we crashed on Monday or when it was uh, significantly slowed down on Monday. Correct. We had 370,000 in one day in a four- to six-hour period. Okay, oh. so really you're talking – so it was 100,000 <laughs> for a whole seven days. Right. Okay. And then – my other question, though, was going back to when we opened the initial registration for the first batch, the 29th, I believe, of December. Do you know what that number was? I don't, but I could go into the history and find it. Okay. So I'd, I'd just be curious on that to see how much bigger it was the second time. Um, okay. You know, so as we go forward, uh, the way I look at things, you know, if, if something goes wrong, you don't dwell on it. You don't stay there. Fix it. You, you know, except, you know, go for the positives, but also understand what went wrong and, and make sure that it doesn't happen again. And I think that that's, on, that's the path we're on, mm -hmm. so I'm encouraged by that. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a 10-minute break. So we'll come back for um, comments. Yes.
Are we ready? We're going to go into uh, public comment. Um, I've got a few. Well, we'll start here. I've got a few cards. Let's see. The first one is a Mike Sansone, followed by Kathy Slosser. Mike Sansone, if you're here, please come up to the podium. No. All right. Kathy Slosser. Slosser. It's a long day. I'm Kathy Slosser. I'm a resident of Terracia. And um, I'm here on behalf of my father, who's 88, nine years old, and has been on kidney dialysis for four years. Um, recently, the CDC uh, published a, a list of conditions that are most impacted by coronavirus. And they added kidney, um, kidney disease, kidney failure to that list, along with Down syndrome and sickle cell anemia. So I'm here to ask you, I've heard some discussion about um, trying to prioritize people. I understand the restrictions of that based on the state's requirements. But what I'm asking, if it becomes possible, if you could do some priority to people, there are actually 12 lit conditions on this list. People with cancer, people with uh, heart failure, uh, those people need to get their vaccines early. And so that's what I'm asking you for. Uh, Coincidentally, I participate in a uh, d sport with my dogs that entry into that is based on a lottery system. You can get an extra draw in that lottery system if you volunteer. So I know that there might be a way that you could take these people with these conditions and give them an extra draw. Uh, maybe their names go in twice or even more than that so that when you do your random draw, they're considered uh, more than just one time. I'm also here uh, because my husband and I just recently uh, had a seven-month cross-country road trip to celebrate my retirement from the clerk's office. And I wanted to tell you that I know in Manatee County there have been some pushback for mask wearing. But uh, the communities that we went to where they had mask mandates, people wore the masks and they were not complaining. They were wearing them because they knew it was the right thing to do because it came from the top down. The top leader said, we will wear our masks. You need to wear your mask. It's for the good of all of us. We were even on trails in national parks in the wilderness where fellow hikers coming towards us were wearing masks. So I'd like you, in addition to considering how you're going to roll out the vaccine, to consider some other ways to reduce the number of people who are getting the coronavirus, as Dr. Bensi just said, it seems to happen when people gather for holidays, when they come together for big groups. So whether you put some temporary restrictions on the number of people for social gatherings, whether you mask mandate, those things are just as important to protecting the people of our community as it is to get them a vaccine. So I would like you to consider that too as well. And I thank you for the work that you're doing today. I thank you for the talk and the, the way the county staff has responded and for the way that they are doing the new website and the lottery system. I think that's going to help a lot of people's anxiety. But in conclusion, if you would just consider giving priority to people with some of the chronic diseases that are on the CDC's website and also think about some other ways to help lower the risk of coronavirus in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Andra Griffin. And if you're in the audience and you haven't filled out, filled out a card, but you'd like to speak, if you'd stand right behind her or near her, you can speak after her. Thank you. Good afternoon. Andrew Griffin, Manatee County. Happy New Year. And I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas holiday. So there are, I have a couple statements, a couple questions, and a couple issues. So we'll start with my um, statements. So we're getting re information from our uh, health people, Jake Sowers, that we have, uh, since the beginning, 22,937 tested positive. So we got, a, we got an actual number from him. However, the seven-day average is still 9.2%. I don't like percentages. Why? Because percentages can quantify literally any number. So in order for us to get 
9.2 percent, we have to have a an amount of people that have been tested and an amount of people that have been positive. You take those numbers, you divide them together, you have a percentage. But I can never get anybody to tell me a number. So it concerns me. I'd like to know how many people are tested in this county, and of those people that are tested, how many are positive? It's a simple number. You can give me a percentage, but I'd like a number. Um, also, why do surgical masks not work? Here's why. Because the particle size of the coronavirus is 70 to 90 nanometers. The cloth masks prevent up to 300 nanometers. That means even if it's stopping your spit and snot and whatever from the mask, it's still putting the particle of the coronavirus out of the mask and into somebody else's face. That's why masks do not work. And uh, Vanessa, I'm thankful that you brought this up because it is on my list. You were talking about, I, I have on here deja vu. <laughs> for the testing kits. Oh. So I'm glad you hit on that. I realized now that was going to be one of my questions that I had was, um, can we purchase our own vaccines? Uh, clearly, that's not the issue. Um, so I do have a question on the seven-day average, what the actual number is, not a percentage. Also, I'm concerned about constitutional rights, okay? And what's going on here at the testing facilities. How are people being told about this vaccine? What are they being told about the, um, uh, the effects that it could have on somebody's body? And primarily the fact that these um, vaccines have aborted fetal tissue in them, which is, a, a problem that I see, and I don't know if it's just the Pfizer vaccine or if it's the Moderna and um, Johnson and Johnson, but I'd like clarification on that because that goes against a lot of people's <coughs> religious rights. And so I just think that these things need to be brought up. They need to be discussed. We need to know what's really in these vaccines. So somebody like me that, that will not take one because of all the stuff I'm reading related to RNA and this fetal tissue is a concern to me. So I'd like those questions clarified. And uh, thank you for your time. And have a great 2021. Thank you. Good questions. We'll see if we can't get some answers for you. And if you would, when you get up to the mic, if you just let us know your name, please. My name is Connie Geth. I'm a resident of Bradenton since 2003. And I just want to say, I think as far as getting the vaccine out as, as soon as you did, I think that's great. I'm but one of those frustrated people that tried to get a, an appointment on the uh, uh, website and didn't have any luck. Um, my reason, though, to, for coming here is I live in Gulf Lakes Mobile Home Park here in Bradenton, and it's a place where uh, tests were given last summer. It's a polling place, so it would be uh, a good place for an alternate site uh, for you to give the vaccination because there's lots of mobile home parks around us where we have a large clubhouse or it could be done outside as a drive through So I'm just offering you that uh, suggestion if you'd like to, you know, have another uh, another uh, site for the uh, vaccinations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else uh, like to speak? All right. What do we have online? Thank you, Madam Chair. Our first caller is number 628-628. We'll allow you to talk. Please hit star six to unmute. And that tell is- us, Tell us your name, please. Star six. We can come back to 628. The next caller is 445. 445, we'll allow you to talk. Please hit star six to unmute. Good afternoon, commissioners. For the record, Glenn Jablina, thank you for hosting this. I, I would tend to agree uh, with the previous caller that if uh, you allow mobile home parks and high density senior citizens uh, that would be that would be great if we can downsize it to that. Here's the problem that I see, and we and we had this for remote area medical the second year we were into it. People hear that we have it, and they'll come from Hillsboro and Pinellas and Polk and 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 come and get the vaccine, or in the ram event, come and get medical. My concern is I pay taxes in Manatee County. I'm 69 years old, so 
a citizen in, within Manatee County that pays taxes that votes uh, should have preference over someone that is 69 that's driving up, driving down from Tampa. They don't pay any taxes in our community. We are paying the service record work workers to to um, give the vaccines on the taxpayer's dime. So I just think that uh, if there was a preference to Manatee County taxpayers, first and foremost, uh, that would be a great consideration. And then these little micro things um, at the mobile home parks would be great as well because a lot of them uh, don't have the wherewithal to wait in line uh, and, and they've done it before and it worked well for the testing. I don't know why it couldn't work for the vaccine. So I appreciate all you do and uh, stay the course and I'll uh, wait for your response. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. That's all the calls we have, Madam Chair. All right, and there's no one else in the audience. All right, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and close public comment. Um, I'm gonna start with commissioner comments. I'll get right to you, but I was asked to start over here. Um, Commissioner Cruz, you have anything? No. no. Commissioner Bellamy? Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> Are we supposed to close? It's closing, right? Oh, well, I will. We'll do that. Yeah. Do you have any comments at this point? Not at this point. Okay. Is this comments or closing comments? Because we do need to we make need a to motion, vote. right? Would you yeah. rather okay. wait and vote first? Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. I, uh, All right. Um, I'm going to need a motion and a second. So moved. What's the, no motion? Second. What's the motion? Okay. Yeah. The, I do we I do we have help. a staff recommended motion? I, can help. I thought we did. Yeah. Thank but you. It, Sherry okay. I did have a question about public comment. Are we going to be asking questions about public comment after we take the vote, Madam Chairman? Is that how you want to do it? I'm sorry, Misty. I was looking at something else. Do, Tell do me you, your question again. Or do you prefer to uh, for us to ask questions about the public comment we heard after the vote? After the vote. Okay. Since you're getting ready to make the motion, we'll go ahead and let you do it. All right. And there's a okay. second. <clears throat> well, there um, will be when, it's, when we have a motion. Madam Chairman, members of the board, um, the motion can read, authorize the county administrator to implement the vaccine standby pool process effective January 7, 2021 at 10 p.m. and to remain open until further notice. So that's Is that fine. your motion? Thank you. Yes. Second? Second. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Servia, a second by Commissioner Satcher. <clears throat> All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? It is approved unanimously. All right, Misty, you wanna go ahead with your question? Yes, um, just two quick questions while we have um, Dr. Bensey here. We heard um, a member of the public talk about aborted fetal tissue being part of the vaccine and that surgical masks don't work, and she gave the very specific reasons why. Could you please comment on those two items, Dr. Bensey? Uh, I haven't seen the detailed research. Um, however, we do provide everyone who comes through with the uh, Moderna information sheet, uh, as well as information on where to look on the CDC website uh, to get in further information about the specific vaccine that they're receiving. Uh, but I don't have that information um, regarding uh, the fetal tissue. I, I've not heard that, but we will research that. Um, uh, Commissioner Servi, I was actually going to look into that after the meeting and let her know. Yeah, I have seen that on several sites, but I have not seen that on reputable sites, and that's why I'm asking for a physician to, to give us the information. It was my understanding these are synthetic vaccines. Correct. And through messenger RNA. Correct. But we'll, yeah. we'll follow up on that and okay. make sure. We and follow. then surgical that's masks, right, please. So... Um, Surgical masks are used in healthcare offices, in hospitals every day, in operating rooms. Um, now, with the N95s also being um, recommended in healthcare situations uh, for the coronavirus as an extra protection, um, there has been also the the other types of masks that are out there, and, and most three layer are acceptable. Uh, the ones that look perhaps more like a ski mask. Uh, mask or cold weather mask is not approved that really doesn't it's not a formal mask if you will but the others have been endorsed as ways to um, diminish uh, transmission uh, if you remember we did do the video and showed you that came out of one of the Florida universities earlier about transmission and uh, having a mask versus not having a mask uh, so um, 
while there's no 100% guarantee, unless there's more layers, as you see people obviously in the ICU with the, the multiple layers, the shields as well as the masks, uh, that as that added protection. Um, but uh, masks do help decrease the transmission of COVID-19 in the community. Thank you. Do you have any commissioner comments that you'd like to go over at this point? Oh, yes, actually, just one. Um, I want to thank everyone for attending this meeting and for the information and for staff pulling all of the, um, the resources together to make things better as we go forward. Um, to my new commissioner colleagues, um, I just want to say this um, in support of us all working together that emergency meetings should be called judiciously very judiciously um, and I know that sometimes we feel pressure when we get lots of emails and this will happen over and over again because the public is very involved as it should be but I would like to suggest that in the name of efficiency that we try to keep emergency meetings down to emergency situations those are just my comments Thank you. Actually, I'm going to respond to that. I'm the one that called the emergency meeting or special meeting today myself. And the reason was because after speaking with the county administrator, we had such a large agenda tomorrow that she thought it best to go ahead and have the meeting today. Well, so I, I was your not new aware commissioners of that. are not fully responsible for this meeting today. I am. Okay. Well, okay. thank you for saying that. I, I was not aware of that. Um, I thought that the request came from Commissioner Van You Austin did Bridge. have three commissioners who requested a special meeting, but I had gone ahead and put it on the agenda for tomorrow instead. And then the county administrator and I talked about it. The other commissioners did speak uh, with the county administrator, and so we changed it to today. Thank you. Um, you know, way. as we all know, I mean, we have to make sure that the Civic Center is available, that METV is available, that the staff is available, that all the commissioners are available, and the hours and hours of coordination it takes should be reserved for those very special occasions. And I can, I can assure you from this chairman that that was all taken into consideration when this meeting was yes, called. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you. Madam Chair, yeah. I'm sorry, could I just yes. briefly interrupt? This is a special meeting, not an emergency meeting. Right. That's what you saw me and Sherry just sort of scuttlebutting okay, about. There you. is a difference in an emergency meeting you can discuss no other business. You can transact no other business than the emergency. A special meeting like our other meetings is more open to other issues being brought up. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Bellamy, did you have a comment? Yeah. <sighs> Right now, where we are in our country, um, we have a lot of turmoil going up, going on, taking place right now in Washington, D.C. And there are a lot of concerns um, right now for peace in, um, in our country. And I think since we're all here together, um, we may need to t find a way to maybe make a statement or something like that to, we don't want this to trickle down. Right, and we know that there are a lot of a lot of concerns. Um, we don't have a lot of in-depth information on what's going on, but we do have a lot of in-depth concerns um, because of the alleged chaos. And the reason why I'm saying alleged because on the 10-minute break, Kevin and I did try try to put it up on my phone, and I just seen the word chaos. So that's what, that's why I say it's alleged um, from Fox News. Oh, right. That's so. Before. Where in DC? Yeah. Oh, they shot somebody. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? CPR in the Capitol. Oh, the Capitol. Right. And oh, I, and yeah. I, and I haven't heard any of that. And, 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 the vice president had to be escorted out in all of the chambers. And, and that being said, I just, either from you or anyone around here, just maybe we just have a call of peace and, and making sure that our county is aware that we are aware of it and that we um, stand united and we are asking for protesters and all individuals involved. You know, the bottom line is, is, is just make good decisions to, to put our country's peace out in front of us. That's all that I, that's what my statement was, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Bellamy. And, and I'll go ahead, I, I was gonna make this statement, I probably still will tomorrow in our meeting. Um, I've had a lot of uh, good communications with the county attorney's office. And the one thing that I wanna see this year is things getting done. No squabbling, no arguing. I want this board to come together and work together 
to get things done. And it might not always be something that I might like or, uh, you know, that somebody else might like. But the, the point is we need to stand together. And however this board votes, then we need to follow through and, and do the job of the people. Because we did all just go through a, a pretty um, intense election. Um, I do know there's a lot of people upset on both sides of the issue, and you're right. And it's a shame because it's over. Let, let's move forward and, and let's do our jobs here for the citizens of Manatee County. I mean, that is really what is so important, is doing the job for the people that voted for us to be here to help them. And so that's kind of where I'm going to be, and I'll have more tomorrow and Tuesday, but um, I just want you guys to all think about it. You all have copies of the, uh, the procedures of this board, how we do things, what we do, what we're not supposed to do, and so forth. I would suggest all of you read them, go over them, be familiar with them, and let's run a tight ship and get a lot done this year. Let's make sure the people of Manatee County know that we're here to make their quality of life better that's what it's for it's not about a certain group or anything else it's about all the people and and that's really where we we need to have our thought processes moving forward so that's kind of what what i'm going to be trying to do and i'm hoping that this board will come behind me and we can all work together to get it done i know you've all seen um, you know the assignments for this year and and i tried to think of who could do the best job on this board depending on what your background is in each position. Um, and I, I, my goal is that I want people to be able to look back at 2021 and say, you know what, that Board of County Commissioners, they got their act together and they did a lot of good, a lot of good, because I've heard a lot of bad about this board and it's time we change all that. Yes, sir. Yeah, I um, briefly, he told me to back back some. I, I briefly um, looked at um, the assignments, and I thought we were going to discuss them Tuesday. Do we need to wait so we can discuss them Tuesday? I didn't know we were going to discuss them. Well, and, that's, and, and I, I'm not necessarily sure of the, the procedure, and I just wanted to make a, a comment about me being on the Public Safety Board um, because I served that board with a lot of honor. I, I, served, I served that board with a lot of honor um, because of all the things that take place in the different entities as far as the sheriff department, the center, center stone, um, EMS, all of the different representation that takes place on the public um, safety board. And I was removed from it. And I, I, I was removed from it. And I don't know what the procedure is. I'm not necessarily sure if we, we vote on it or it's just a, a, a pull um, from the chair or anything like that. I'm not necessarily sure how that's done. Um, but I would like to stay on that board. I'm going to be very candid with you all. I would like to stay on that board. We had set goals and things that we were striving to do for the year 2021, and there was a lot of things that had transitioned from the previous chair to me where a lot of them were excited about the direction that we were going, and we were starting to um, – make some progress based on the things. So again, I didn't uh, read it all. Um, I'm not necessarily sure what the procedure is and everything like that. And if it's chair related, we can't talk about it no other time. Um, but right, we can't talk about it no other time. And the, the other thing is um, I requested to be a part of the MPO. And, and I, I didn't expect you know, I was hoping to be on the MPO, but here's the reason why. We're talking about bridge options and, that, and traffic and things like that, and that's not the specifics of the MPO, but we know that's something major that's taking place here um, as part of our legislative platform. It's one of our number one priorities. We discussed it um, this morning. Um, and to, to me, as the district representative of District 2, knowing that some of those, all of those bridge options are going down through the heart of, um, of, of my district, and um, the way my community feels about it, the people that I represent. Um, again, I'm not necessarily sure how that take place. You know, I'm not really that type of person that go against the grain. But in this particular situation, um, when we're talking about the Public um, Safety Council, you know, it, it gave me great honor to be a part of that and some of the things that we were working on. And I would want to still be the chair of that. And I'm not necessarily sure who, how it's done, Madam Chair. 
I'm, I'm not necessarily um, sure how it's done, and it's nothing against whoever's on it. Right. It's, it's nothing against who's there, whoever's on it, um, but we don't hold these conversations. It's just something that, that takes place, and um, I, I just would ask for that to be looked at different as well as the MPO, but if it can't be, if it can't be, I'm the type of person that I understand that also, but at least my voice will be heard. Well, I can tell you that generally the chairman, whoever's incoming chair, handles those things. I will look at it. I can't promise, but I will look at it to see if any changes can come about. I'm not going to promise, but I will look at it. So is it okay if I dialogue with you? Sure. So would, would, would the chair please take in consideration? You know, I'm not necessarily sure who asked for what. And obviously, um, just like, you know, they're, they're senior you know, if, if you're incoming, if you're incoming, that's one thing. That's how you all told me, well, hey, you're the incoming guy, so you're going to be stuck with this. And, that, and, that, and that's how I was treated and everything like that. And I took it in stride. I didn't tell you that. Uh, everybody stuck me with the canvassing board. <laughs> it, was, it was unanimous. And, and I said, okay, sure, not a problem. I'll learn on the go. I'll, I'll, I'll learn on the go. And, and I really, and that's just my spirit, and I thank God for it, to be honest with you. But when we're talking about the opportunity, um, for you to, to, to consider it and everything like that, um, is it a one-person vote or does everyone have say so? And, and how it, it's, it's, it's just the chair. So please, Madam. No, that's you, not exactly right. That's not chair. right. Okay. Yeah, there is a, a procedural rule 3.5 which states the board may appoint or allow the chair to appoint commissioners to sit on or serve as liaisons to other regulatory or advisory committees or boards as permitted by law. So See, historically, the chair has done this. Uh, in the 17 years I've been here, I've never seen the board overrule the chair on an appointment, but the, the board could, by majority vote, just as any other decision of the chair can be overruled by majority vote of the board. So that's how that. And in, 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 in the spirit of collaborating, for all that's been on the same page, I'm not asking to get to that level. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not asking to get to that level, and I would, I would respectfully ask not to. My, my thought is to please consider that I'm requesting to be on the Public Safety Council as the chair, as I've been for the last year, so continue the progress that we've been making. I will take it under consideration. Chair, <laughs> kind of next. Yeah, for like a half hour. Yeah, well, I am too. Okay. Yeah, I wanted to too, because well, I went, I did go through wait, the- Wait, can I acknowledge so I'm not you before to you? Yeah, Stay. go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Thank you. the two of you were no, I've been, interacting. No. Okay. This is not kindergarten. Um, I looked at my assignments. I'm okay with whatever you signed me to because I knew I wasn't going to get what I wanted. But you did give me WCID, so I appreciate it. Um, I'm fine with that, but I did notice Bellamy. And I know you've been on it two years now. Mm -hmm. And so... I mean, and I just couldn't understand why you'd done that either. And I actually called Mickey um, on my way here today to say, you know, what, I mean, nobody's ever not done, you know, what the chair has recommended. But the chair is usually, you know, and I can, I, I, I would, I mean, the MPO, I know, I think George had wanted it too, and Kevin. The MPO, there's always been an at-large commissioner on it. So I was assuming that, but whatever the chair wants with that. But the uh, the um, the board that you're on is very very specific, and it takes a few years to learn. And you have relationships with all the law enforcement, and so I would respectfully ask that the chair consider um, changing that to Mr. Bellamy. And if not, then at another meeting in the future, I'll um, ask to override that just just that one, unless Do any other now. commissioners have any other ones. Well, I would like for you to consider it because I well, think, I in all I fairness, would. he was very respectful and he really wants to be on it. Oh, this is specific to this. Just, yes, sir. I'm, I'm listed as the alternate on public safety. If it helps, I'm willing to step down from that, whether it means he's going to alternate and he moves to alternate. He wants to be down. Chair. I'm willing to release that spot if it helps shuffle people around. I'm just an alternate position anyway. I got four other boards here. I'll take one. it under advisement right. and get with you on that, Reggie. So if we're not going to make a decision today, then I'm going to make a motion that we um, override the, um, the, um, the appointment of Commissioner Satcher to the Public Safety Coordinating Council and put Commissioner Bellamy on that. And then since Commissioner Cruz has stepped down, possibly, then Commissioner Satcher as um, alternate. Be and, as a incoming commissioner that's been here for years that asked to have this, in all due respect, 
I think we should have continuity, especially what's going on within our country. So that's my motion. Thatcher's got some. So go ahead. Thank you. Would you con consider uh, holding off so we? One of the frustrating things about being a county commissioner is you can't talk to another right. county commissioner. No kidding. Right. So I feel like me and Reggie, could, uh, Commissioner Bellamy, right. could figure this out. Um, but of course, we can't talk about it um, unless we're all here, yeah. etc. Um, so, so this, so we can't talk about it another time, though. Right. We can't talk about it. So we can't talk about it right now, uh, which I would rather have a conversation in private. But um, can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> can't do that. Right. Trust me, it'll get back. Don't do <laughs> yeah. that. Right. So I, I mean, obviously, I think probably I can't know for sure what the chair was thinking, but uh, but a big part of where I come from has been talking about public safety, keeping people safe, um, supporting the sheriff, et cetera. So uh, that's very important to me. Um, Can I make a suggestion? I, I just don't feel like we should have this vote right now. If y'all give me, you know, and maybe the chair, because um, you're asking. You're, Can I make a suggestion? Yes, ma'am. First of all, I, I'm not sure your comments that you made earlier, everybody told you this or that. I didn't. I wasn't involved in anything you were told, told me what? before on the canvassing board and all that. Uh, that wasn't me. So I, I don't know a lot of what's transpired there with you. Um, but the other thing is, is that I never knew it was so important to you. So that's the first I'm hearing on that, too. But if you guys, I mean, if George is willing to give it up, which he said as alternate, then perhaps you and James could work between the two of you, mm -hmm. and you could both be involved. How, um, how we could only have one chair. Right. Yeah. Right. How important is the port to you? Oh, God. That's different. <laughs> no. That's not a negotiation. <laughs> now, wait it's a minute. Not? <laughs> going, James. Yeah, I don't good. think you can go there, James. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was good, though. <laughs> So he still didn't answer that. Uh, and you know what? Let me acknowledge <coughs> yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Commissioner Van Ostenbridge. Uh, I, I was just going to say before it turns into a used car lot and we start right. bartering. Yeah, um, really. You know, the chair said that she would take it under advisement. Uh, I'm comfortable okay. with letting the chair take it under advisement. Yeah. I don't know if we had a second. Satcher seconded, didn't you? No. no. Oh, well then. Voting just okay, well, so I'll, if it I'll doesn't happen, I'll, I'll, then at the next wait, meeting I'll bring hold it Hold on. I'll definitely second it because <laughs> oh, that's something that I want. And I don't, but I don't okay. want it to get to that. I think we can get this yes. straight. Yeah, let's, I don't know. How he don't wants to, get to be to chair. That. It's the only way you're going to get it straight. Right, so that's why I was Well, like, not necessarily. There you go. So the way, the great, the gracious way to do this would be <laughs> to give me a chance to make the decision instead of in front of, I mean, I, anyway, y'all can, y'all can call for a vote right now if you want. I'll second it. There's going to be a vote. Well, okay. Well, There's a motion and a second, so we've got comment. to vote on it. Uh, I will not support the motion because I think that these two gentlemen are both very honorable. doesn't matter to me. Uh, I did it because I thought I knew his background and I knew he was really interested, and I'd never heard you say anything really about it, per se, so it never occurred to me that, that was a big issue. So I apologize <laughs> to you, Reggie. Um, but I think he's right. I think that, um, you know, we have two very honorable men here that, that know what's going on. Let's let them think about it overnight. Come back tomorrow in our meeting. We'll have a discussion on it. And if they haven't come up with a solution, then we'll take it from there. I think that would be the, the best way uh, to handle it at this point. Yeah. Madam Chair, you said they came up with a solution. Well, they can't talk, so what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> they, he can sleep on it and dialogue I tomorrow. I just got the email. Carol, the I don't think today. like you do, so, uh, evidently, know, because it never occurred to me that they might try talking to no. each other. Well, how okay? you um, No, that's not at all what I meant. Okay, I'll, I'm going to withdraw my motion until tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'll, only, I'll let you guys think about it. I'm, I'm, I'm good with either way, to be honest with you, because that's just not the way I do it. But I, I will leave with this about the canvassing board. <laughs> I will leave with this. It was. I'm, I'm being honest with James. It was. It was, it was a 7-0 vote. Right. And it was made with a lot of laughter and a lot of rookie comments Never behind it. And it. I know. Yeah. Why. And I say, hey, I don't have a problem. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't have a problem if that's what I have to do in order for me to learn. Uh, if, I'm if, going if to it, address that real well, quick. If it, if it sweetens the pot for James, I'm the alternate on the canvassing board. I'll throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, alternate canvassing board. That's big. Well, actually, it's not going to amount to anything this year. There aren't, I don't think, any elections. Reggie, I do remember that vote. And the reason it happened is because the rest of us couldn't do it. The chairman couldn't do it. She was running for re-election. I was running for re-election. Uh, I had endorsed somebody. Yeah, she had already she come had out and two. endorsed. I think Misty had too. There wasn't anybody left that could do it but you. But we None of us laugh. qualified. We still laugh. But that was the behind the scenes. I'm saying the, in front when everybody was <laughs> laughing is, to call me a rookie. Yeah, okay. None of us could do it. And, and so this year it was real easy because, number one, there's probably not going to really be any elections in 2021. No. And number two, I'm not running for anything, and, and neither is the vice chair. So it was easy. Commissioner okay. Van Austin. Are, are we going to do commissioner comments at the end, or are we essentially <laughs> doing that now? <laughs> okay. I think we're, we're so, we uh, were in the process of doing that. Right. Yes. I would just want to wrap it up on a little bit of a serious note and and say that I see there is a good bit of violence in the nation's capital. Wow. Um, the peaceful transfer of power Whoa. is what huh. the country is based on, and so I hope that that the violence ends ASAP. And I would call on the citizens of our community to remain peaceful in the nights ahead. Amen. That's what I was saying. Yes. Way to end it. Amen. Any other comments to be made by this board? <laughs> Please don't. Um, Phil, no, anything good? I'm good. No, ma'am. <laughs> Commi uh, Dr. Bensey, we really appreciate you being here with us today. You were so helpful, and thank you for that percentage. I, I really appreciate it. Jake, you guys, Paul, thank you so much. And let us know if we can be of any help in the future uh, with this endeavor. So with that being said, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>